All right, to answer this question, let's do exactly what the question says. Right here, I'm giving you a non-price discriminating monopoly. Right, here's the demand, here's the marginal revenue, marginal cost, ATC. They're going to produce where MR hits MC, that's the quantity, charge the price up to demand, the box of profits down to the ATC curve and up. So right there's the box of profit. Take a look at this, and I'm going to convert it into a perfectly price discriminating monopoly, where the monopoly is charging every single consumer exactly how much they're willing to pay. Ready and go. All right. Now there's only one thing that's changed here. Instead of the marginal revenue being down here, now the marginal revenue is the same as the demand curve. The reason why is to sell another unit, the monopoly lowers the price, but it doesn't have to lower the price of previous units it could have sold for a higher price. So they sell one unit to one person for $100, they only sell another unit, they can sell another unit to the next person for $90 and still charge the first person $100. That's price discriminating. So if this is the case, what do they produce? They produce where MR hits MC, which is over here. That's the quantity for a price discriminating monopoly. If that's the quantity, well, what about the price? The price used to be here for a non-price discriminating monopoly. So where's the price now? Is it right here? No. Remember, they're charging each consumer what they're willing to pay. So there's multiple prices. So this isn't the price, and they're not charging up here. They're charging all the way down to here and up. For the person who's willing to pay 100, they're charging them 100. For the person who's willing to pay 90, they charge them 90. The person who's willing to pay 80, they pay 80. So for all along that demand curve, they're charging multiple different prices. What about the area of profit? Well, the average total cost produced in this many units is right here. That's the average total cost. So they're sold that unit for that amount. That's the cost of that unit. So that's profit. For a price discriminating monopoly. Now, since each consumer is paying exactly how much they're willing to pay, there's no consumer surplus. There's also no dead weight loss because we're producing the quantity that society actually wants, where the marginal cost of society equals what people are willing to pay, the marginal benefit. So the graph shows answers A through D are all correct. But answer E is incorrect because they're not just charging everyone higher prices. In fact, they're charging some people higher prices than they would before, but other people are charging lower prices than they would before because they're price discriminating. It's story time! All right, it's time to take a break and listen to a quick story. When I was a senior in high school, I had a big head. Like, I thought I was like the greatest thing in the entire world. That's right, watch out, coming through. Who's Clifford? I am. Get out of my way, freshman. All right, so this one time, it's right after lunch, and all the students are going to class, and I'm talking to this girl through the door of a classroom. So, uh, what do you think me and you go out sometime? The bell rings, and the teacher's like, Adios, senor Clifford! It was a Spanish class. So I'll catch you later. So I'm late to class, and I start running to my next class. So as I'm running down the corner to the class, this door swings open, and BAM! Oh! hits me! Now, I played a lot of football, but I had never been hit so hard in my entire life. I get hit, and I slide like 10 feet on the floor backwards. Oh, I'm like on my backpack, but I like... Slowly, like, look around, and I look up, and I see who opened the door. It was the smallest little freshman kid in the world. And he had just the most terrified look on his face. So, like, I get up all slowly, and I beat the crap out of him. No, I'm just joking. Just joking. Just joking. Just joking. I get up all slowly and, like, embarrassingly just walk away with my head down to get to class. I go and sit down in my class. Oh, oh. And my friends were like, dude, what the heck happened to you? Do nothing, just leave me alone. For the rest of my senior year, any time I thought I was so awesome, so amazing, so perfect, I'd see that little freshman kid and it would totally deflate my ego. I'd be like, I'd see that kid, and he'd be like, yeah, that's right, man, I know what happened. There's two lessons I learned. Number one, don't be a bully. Number two, any time I walk past the door, I put my hand out to make sure it doesn't hit me in the face. Get out of my way, freshman. Not, am I hurting you? Are you okay? Oh, my neck cracked <laughs> How you doing?